I am the Son of Man. I am the only begotten Son of God. And there is a daughter of God. And starting with Adam and Eve, there has been a son and daughter of God every thousand years or so. And um, we are the seventh. While I am in the world, there is light in the world. But I'm not the doer. The daughter of God is the doer. The king, the, the queen is above the king. But both are needed. So that's good. <laughs> It's, um, it hasn't been on my mind that much. Um, I've been discovering new things and love and, but, um, a while ago I decided this is okay, trying to understand this, uh, without concrete proof, I felt that. I don't have any genetics from my dad. That's why I'm a begotten son of God, is my body, that the, the, the immaculate conception occurred and God put a sperm into my mum's egg with a designed genetics to ensure that I could be a vessel for God on earth. Yeah, in our souls, we are all gods. But your physical body is the part you've been given to play. And it has all the, the genetics of your ancestors. And um, your genes can change within your life. And if you've had children, more than one child, The genes that you put in with the first child won't be quite the same as the genes you put in with a child later on, because you would have changed. And that gets passed down to the next generation, and so it has been. And God gave us this earth. We've been on it for a long time, and not, but only as humans in the last 6,000 years or so. Um, it has been our learning ground, it has been our school to be on earth.
And this is a special time. It's the awakening time. And the masses will awaken. There's so much to say. I've got tons of subjects on my mind that I want to talk about. And I want to get them all down on this video. Um, something in me is telling me that I've got two videos left. <laughs> Something's going to happen when I've reached that 322 videos. I said in a video a while back that you know, the Illuminati or the elite or the evil deceivers, whoever they are, have let me know that they know about me. And they did this by the video I made about the Salisbury poisoning. Well, after a week or so, was getting um, a bit less, I think was getting like 50 or 60 views a day but for three days it stayed on 322 views and I could see the little analytics they were there and whether it was two or three days it stayed on 322 and that was suspicious and 322 is one of the divine numbers and you can see it on the skull and crossbones they got 322 so that the skull and crossbones is there to scare you off. The 322 is there for anyone who knows the divine numbers to recognize this sign. And other people just think, well, what's, what's 322 doing there? That's just stupid. But stay away from it. The skull and crossbones, scary. <laughs> So in my mind, I have this feeling they're being charitable with me, and they're going to let me get to 322 videos, and then maybe cut me off, or I don't know, come and arrest me, pass. Maybe do nothing at all, maybe just <laughs> to make me say this, and then make me look an idiot. <laughs> so I thought I'd mention it, but I don't know until we get there. and. Um, I almost wanted to rush to make the videos, <laughs> just get it out of the way, just get it done. And then I thought, maybe I shouldn't make any more videos and <laughs> just leave it at 320. Because, to be honest, I've probably said everything that needs to be said. Um, apart from perhaps, you know, one or two details, which perhaps I will forget to say. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I'm... You know, obviously make a video, I hope someone watches it and gets something from it maybe, but if I think like the main thing is I just want to get off across what I want to say and get that done, that's probably a, the best thing to do rather than thinking what other people want to hear or should hear or whatever. I have said it all and I don't want to repeat myself. You know, quite often I'll be talking and then something comes into my mind. Yes, that would be good to say now, but I've said it. So, I want to say it again. But today, this morning, I was thinking, look, to myself. Is it, are you, I mean, I was thinking I should get a genetic test, but I haven't got the money. I just haven't got the spare money to do that. I should perhaps go and look at my dad's files, wherever they may be, in my mum's house and check this computer and just find out what his blood type is. That's one of the things I was going to show you. It's my dog. My dog tags. Yeah, man. I was in the army. is isn't fake. Let's see if we can see this on camera. Oh, it's backwards. Why is it backwards? Does writing have to be backwards? That is a bit weird. Right, anyway, you have to read backwards. I can hold it still. Norsk, Norwegian. That's my birth date. And that was my Norwegian number. 
and there you can see my blood type blood type AB plus baby that is rare so and I know my mum's O so maybe I should just get um, here's my medal for being in the army <laughs> a long time ago right <coughs> so yes if I found out my dad had different blood type um, obviously most people just think oh, your mum had it away with someone else I know she's O by the way um, or if she has got AB then that would make me think well you know so I should check <laughs> again this thing <laughs> going to come up again about checking the facts but my brothers they don't seem to know theirs um, and they're just hiding it from me and if I spoke to my mum about you know do you remember the Immaculate Conception you know this whole thing I was she was one of the first people I told when I thought I was the Christ I'm not saying I don't anymore but I suppose there's been moments when I think I'm not and like I said this morning I was just um, to sort of think so so I was asking God for a sign and um, and then I was thinking I probably should already know if you're asking God for a sign you've probably already had one and you're just not seeing it and what came to me was the effect maybe I have on people in my vicinity and um, that made me think of what Yeshua said about um, while I'm in the world there is light in the world so you know it's my presence here having an effect and uh, how far does that effect spread But um, I bumped into people and um, had chats and the first guy I bumped into was a preacher, evangelicist, that I knew from work before. Nice guy, really nice guy. His name's Joshua and uh, I think he heard about some of my claims that I was making third hand or something. Probably like, he thinks he's the Christ! You would probably, you think he's Jesus Christ? Which I don't, right? Jesus is the name of our mother and father God. But uh, he once had a little chat with me and he goes, you know the name, the name. <laughs> he's like, he told me basically the name, the name will be Joshua, that will be the name. <laughs> His name is Joshua, so, you know. Is that, is that just something showing me that everyone thinks they're the one? Yeah, maybe. And we are all gods, so, you know, there is that. Right? We are all children of God on our souls. But we are not our physical beings. Our physical beings is a vessel, is a part we play. So the claim I'm making is that the vessel I'm in, the part I'm playing, has been adapted by God, has been produced by God. Right? It is there for to be a, a conduit between people on the earth and God and do we need it well because you know I am so sure of my feelings that I I am very very confident in saying that if I'm not the one there is not a one. And by the way, someone else is probably going to get the credit initially for the changes that have been going on in the last few years. And I'm making a series of videos, which are basically, no, a series of audios, which is basically me going back to uh, the videos I was making after my born again moment and editing them down. Uh, to be all 
sort of correct in a sense or very close to being correct if partly on your learning you have to sort of be a bit off but um, so I'm making this series to show the journey because obviously I say to you go and watch all my videos from 2014 you're gonna have to sit through quite a lot of boring pauses and I think that's frankly is fair enough it's a bit too much to ask of people so if you see the videos I'm putting up, they're kind of copies of the podcasts I'm making. They'll have titles, The Faithful Prophet. And uh, I recommend if you're interested, because I don't know how many of you watching now, how long you've been with me. I have a feeling people who have been with me several years are, are very few. And um, totally forgot what I was saying. Um, so, you know, about, yes, about the physical body is just the vessel. And in our souls, we are all children of God. Obviously, I've said this many times. But so that my vessel, my body, is, is the one. And if it's not me, there, then there isn't one. That's, that's where I've got to, isn't it? I'm very confident in saying that. And that probably comes across as arrogant. But I almost, I know that. I know that. So, the possibility then is there that maybe no one is. That we're all, you know, maybe we all feel it, we all think it. Because there is truth in it that we are all children of God. That is true. But if there isn't a Christ, if there isn't a chosen one, if there isn't a particular one that God has chosen to be the vessel then in a sense we wouldn't be able to explain Yeshua you'd have to just say he was a normal guy just circumstance happened to pick up some teachings and just circumstance led to him saying the things he said and the effect on history. Well, I think that's too much for people to swallow. And I think you can see in Earth's history how good things have been and how bad things have been that God has been having some influence every thousand years or so. Now Yeshua was a big one, had a big impact. It had a big impact, but not all of it was positive. You know, 300 years later they take his teachings, but they mix it with stuff. And so there's not, it's not the pure thing anymore. And which is why uh, religions today, or well, it's part of the reason why religions today are on the wrong track. And Yeshua himself was against some of what's in the scriptures. He was against the law of Moses. He broke some of those laws. Like the Sabbath. Um, it's a risky, I'm going to get totally stoned. <laughs> So I'm not feeling that. I'm feeling that it is true. And it is me. And I uh, had another conversation with a guy who just lives around the corner, down the path from me. And we've only ever really spoken about the weather before, briefly. And um, we had a good little chat. And uh, he was telling me some things and I was telling him some things. And whether that is the answer to my asking God for a sign, I kind of already did. I, I kind of already got that. You know, I'm not waiting on any more information. I do know. It's just, often it's just hard to believe. And, uh, and I think as well, 
you know, I should employ more patience. Because I could be around for a long time, and this, this awakening could take place over a long period of time. And may, I, eventually I will check my dad's blood, but I'm not going to make that the thing. Because it could always be, I don't know, falsified maybe in some way. I don't know. Um, but I'm just going to leave that. Because I, I don't want to rely on a bit of paper to tell me something. If I should know, I should know. You know, all is all in here. All can be known in the heart. The detector of... <laughs> this big shit. Could so easily go into another subject. It's... Uh, It's, it's um, you know, because we all do need to seek and find the truth for ourselves. You can't, you can't just give it to someone. But I do believe in sharing, because I do think, you know, I like to see what other people are sharing. I'm sure that's, you know, that's quite common. So I should share. It's like, it's my duty to share, I think. If, if there was a, if I wasn't, you know, go back a few years and I didn't think I was the one, right? But I did think there was a one. And I did think that if they were here, that they would know and that they would share it. That's, they would declare it. That's what I, what I felt. So I think it's right and proper to do so. Yo, um, okay. Um, okay, I think, no, I want to move on here, let me just summarize this a bit. Yes, I wanted to talk about this as well, connection with this, and you're kind of going on to the next thing, so it's good, right. So I said I'm the son of God, physical being is... It was an immaculate conception. The father, you know, takes a sperm and an egg, and in this instance, the sperm was created by God, designed by God for this purpose. And um, and I do now believe that it's um, that there's also a daughter. And that's my soulmate. So my soulmate was is also the daughter of man, <laughs> the daughter of God. And there was immaculate conception there. Now I think maybe in that case, I'm thinking, because she does look more like a dad, that possibly in this case God made the egg and it was, so God sneakily put one of God's eggs in, in before one of her mother's eggs. Mind you, all the eggs are made when you're a baby. Maybe God made the egg <laughs> back then. <laughs> right, but the point of it, there is a woman Christ too. Because I've learnt through my meditation that a man cannot do nothing without a woman. And guide, but the woman decides. The woman makes things happen. She's there. And if we go back to Yeshua, Mary Magdalene, right? She lived on beyond Yeshua, and perhaps wasn't as good without him, but could still make things happen. And as we did, because I think we know she came to southern France. And there was a big resurgence of this religion in, in France and, um, and the letter J. <laughs> and also, we can't forget the forgotten Christ, the unknown Christ. The Christ who has received nothing, in a sense, apart from 
something in a myth or two. And that would be Merlin or Saint Francis and his soulmate. So, and it, Francis was probably around for, even though it says he died when he was 40, he didn't, it's fake. He lived on. He had something to do with Arthur of Brittany, uh, who would nearly became king of England and France, but was ousted. But then may have come back as, a diff as Simon de Montfort and made big changes to the constitution. Well, we haven't really got a constitution in Great Britain, but had affected things. And I think he would have been around for over 200 years. So there was light in the world for a little over 200 years in the sixth Christ. And that was from about 1180 to about 1400. This is just the feeling I get, right? When I say feeling, and I mean <laughs> that, you know, that is a feeling, that is a what most people think of as a feeling which is a sort of a distant sort of I think that now when I talk about other feelings like they, they become so much more real and solid and within you so so yeah uh, this is my feeling so that's kind of like the forgotten Christ and so for me now you know, so far I'm undetected, you know, but I do think people are going to start looking because they're going to say, you know, things are getting better. Oh, there's been no chemtrails since 18th of April. It's beautiful. We've had three days of beautiful blue sky. Not one single one of those bloody lines that just lasts in the day. I've seen a couple of short ones. Anyway, again, I've gone on. But yes, so we're going to see that oh, things are getting better, things are getting better, What what's caused this, you know. So I think people are going to start looking. And I've got a good feeling that um, someone else is going to take the credit. Uh, it could be someone who's already famous. Uh, but yeah, i got a good impression that's going to happen. So, you know, it isn't a um, problem for me. I'm quite happy with being anonymous and um, whatever is meant to be will be. So I want to show you another object. Now I don't know if my soulmate watches my videos. Sometimes I think she does but I think she's probably quite busy to be doing other things. Now that is the old yin and yang symbol, right? And she, by the way, she gave me this many years ago in a nice little box. Right, <clears throat> because I love her. <laughs> yeah, so you see what I had this feeling the other day. You see, you've got the yin and yang symbol. Now, you've got the two halves, like a pair, now you've got a dot of each in each, do you know what I mean? So you've got the white bit with the black dot, and then you've got the black bit with the white dot. And I've been feeling that is true of the soul. I There's this area in my heart that sometimes I just feel it, and I know it's her. It, it brings me straight to her. So it is really like, it's honestly like, there's a bit of her in me. And so there's a bit of me in her. And, um, yeah, it's uh, really good. But, um, yeah, I, uh, it's those feelings with the soulmate that really propel things and make things happen. So clearly I want more of that, you know, and it's tempting to 
because I could like reach out to her and and uh, do that, but you know she doesn't really want to know. <laughs> You know, not outwardly anyway. It's not a very good situation. You know, oh, you know, I'm single. I've been single for years. You know, she isn't. She's married, married with kids, and probably they seem to be getting this feeling. Maybe they're going through the seven-year itch. Like, what is the seven-year itch? You know, it's um, you wouldn't get out with the soulmate. You'd get the seven-year blessing. But the seven year itch is so common. So what do we don't really hear about the uh, the ten year coming together back in love thing though, do we? You know, from what I hear about people in long term relationships, they just kind of begin to hate each other more and more, but what happens? They just resign themselves to it. To stay in it for the kids and stuff, even though the kids would prefer it if the Parents were just happy. So, you know, this seven year itch thing is too common, and it's, it's common enough that, um, that it's just a sign that there's lots of people who aren't with their soulmates because they, they get into relationships for the wrong reason. I know I got married because of lust. <laughs> Sorry. And, um, I thought, you know, get married, guaranteed sex. That's what I was thinking. So I wanted to find someone that I'd want to have sex with for the rest of my life. That was, that was my reasoning back then. I wasn't, um, wasn't taking it from God because at that point in my life I believed that all of us were God. So I didn't put God in the mixture, I just put all of us. All of us babies still at school. That's what's that film where they get school kids get on trapped on an island. Can't remember what it's called. Oh, I watched a good film the other day, which has given me some inspiration to just stand strong and just be me, son of man. I don't mean to brag. I'm not bragging. Maybe I'm a bit. I don't know. I don't. I won't. I don't want to brag. You know, the film is called The Fountainhead, and maybe a lot of people will have heard about this just recently if you live in England, because the new Conservative MP has proclaimed himself a fan of this person who wrote this. I mean, someone, I think it was a Russian woman, not not communist at all, it's like, it's not communistic at all, it's, it's like the opposite of communism, in a sense. <coughs> Some interesting things in this film, like, this guy refuses to volunteer his time and work for nothing, because it makes the point that would make him a slave, and he's definitely against slavery. And if, I don't know, but, you know, a lot of pe a lot of volunteering goes on today because there are some retired people who've got, like, too much time on their hands and they'd like something to do. So they volunteer, but, you know, is that right? Is it right? Does it take away jobs from other people? They may argue no, because this stuff that they're doing is nice, but we just wouldn't be able to afford it. So, I don't know. Alright, neighbour, slam your door. Um, so the other thing that this film was really about was about individualism. And uh, the main guy, you know, his main thing in life was his work. His labours, you know, what he does was the most important thing to him, and he was going to do it his way. And there's one part of this film where, you know, he's, he's an architect, and um, 
he gets a few jobs, but he gets he gets a bad press, and the newspaper goes out against him, and and it gets to this point where he's like, you know, he's really on the end of his tether. He's about to run out of money and everything, and not going to be able to continue being an architect. But he gets offered to to do a project, but they have to change it a bit. They have to put these faces on it, you know. And you think at this point, there's no man in the world who would say, who wouldn't just go, oh, all right then, okay, make the changes. You know, perhaps they're thinking they might, you know, later on I'll, I'll get my influence into it. But he was, he was adamant, there's nothing I'm going to, if I'm going to do this, it's going to be mine. This is, this is the only thing that is going to remain of me on this earth. So, you know, it's either my way or the highway, <laughs> I guess. Anyway, so he said no, you know, and then he went to go and work in some, you know, he said I'd rather be a manual labourer than, than to compromise in any way on this. And, uh, yeah, but as the film goes on, he gets another chance and there's a woman involved, <laughs> must be his soulmate. And, um, yeah, it's really good. It's really good. And it, and it did. It gave me, it gave me the uh, more sort of, what's the word, maybe confidence in, in what I've been doing. Because I certainly have struck out from the norm. And I've done things my way. And I've... You know, and that has included kind of going to God. So it's, it isn't just me, actually. It's um, what I feel. But that brought me to God, doing things my way. Brought me to God. And once it brought me to God, I was like, God, I want to do things your way. <laughs> it's my will to do your will. And... Um, you know, every time I say my prayer, I end it, so be it. And like, honestly, the first time I said that prayer, it was like, a bit scary. Like, after I said, so be it, so let it be done. You know, it's like, what could happen? Mm -hmm. You know? And uh, anyway, it's, like, it's all good. I'm very comfortable with doing things like that now, and I trust in God. Good. <coughs> so that was nice. Now, <clears throat> so the daughter of God is here, and um, whatever she's doing is part of God's plan. Whatever she's done, it was meant to be. And, uh, I think she's done some very good things. She has. And uh, I really hope we can join up soon. Um, whether it has to be in physical life or just in the heart, you know? Because I know it makes a big difference. We'll see. It's all part of God's plan, so I don't have to worry. So I think I've said all I need to say on that. Only that if you're watching, I love you. <laughs> I, I know it's you. I would, I would bet my life on it. I know it's you. Um, yeah. I'll move on. Move on up! <laughs> so I brought this just to remind me what to talk about. Flat Earth. Made a video about Flat Earth. Got loads of dislikes, got loads of abuse. When uh, the disciples asked Yeshua what's for some advice in these end times, the first words out of his mouth were be ye not deceived. 
Now, there may have been a long pause there, we don't know from the books, but let's just take a pause there. The first piece of advice, be ye not deceived. Now, the thing about Flat Earth, the thing that gets me, is mainly one of the good things that the Flat Earthers have the round earthers, or the general scientific community seem to miss. And that's about the earth being special. And the scientists will discover this, and in fact they've recently discovered a clue for that the earth is very special in that they could not seem to detect phosphorus, phosphate, phosphorus, out in the universe. It doesn't seem to be appearing in the stardust and stuff like that. And it's not hasn't got through yet the connotations of this because well it must have done they obviously they must be discussing it probably with biting their nails trepidation. So the flat earthers have this because it's the flat earth with the dome and everything and all the stars are just dots there isn't that big universe out there, that it's all nonsense, that's the flat earth side, that does kind of make earth more special, doesn't it? It's like, you know, God is right there looking through the dome or whatever. So, you know, that is more correct than the current sort of scientific, yeah, there's billions of planets out there, which is true but not billions of living planets. There's no life without phosphorus. So this planet has been in, like injected with life. God breathed life onto the Earth. So the, the Flat Earthers have got that more right than the current whatever. But um, that is kind of the only thing. So I was going to, I was thinking about making a video about flat earthers, the things they are right about, and I kind of it, there's only one, but it is a biggie. It is a big one. But this is what I say to the flat earthers, you know, just because the Earth is round and rotating would be a better word than spinning, rotating because it's very slow, it's only once every 24 hours that it does a full turn, that's not exactly spinning in my mind. It only looks like it's spinning if you advance time in fast forward, serious fast forward. Um, but it, like I say, it's a biggie, so it's a big thing. So, yes, but I, the, the current belief I have is that there are seven Earth-like planets in the universe. And um, that's the way it is. So not very many if you think there's 100 million stars in every galaxy and 100 billion galaxies. It's huge, but that shouldn't scare you, Flat Earthers. You know, it's, it's good that the universe is big, I think. Like, because there's, you know, going to be loads more to explore and learn, you know, just, just within the physical universe. So much more to know shows us how how you know near the beginning we are. Even if we our souls have been in preparation for four billion years, we're still right at the beginning of an eternal life. We're only just becoming aware of what we are. So there's so much more out there. Even the, with the size of the universe, it is, and with my current theory about this is a universe within a universe and that's God's mother and father and that would be in another universe and another universe you know that's like huge and the fact that the universe is is still ex expanding it's growing it's always going to keep growing even with that colossal huge sizeness thinking about it when I first got that feeling that I'm in God and God is in God's mum and dad and that I suddenly felt this major 
claustrophobia feeling. And I, I kind of went all the way to source in that current, that particular meditation feeling. And But my heart was okay with it. And this is what happens like when you meditate, something comes on, a strong feeling, and then your mind goes, oh, this is this. And then the mind can't really, and the mind is sort of, oh, how can this be? But then you go and check with your heart, and your heart's like, cool. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah? Yeah? Like, try that with infinity. So, back again, Yeshua's warnings was, be ye not deceived. And, you know, everyone's deceived, apart from me. Again, sounds like I'm bragging, but I've gone through the feelings. I know the truth. The flat earthers are wrong about the shape of the earth. That shows they've got an issue with their logic or some sort of lack of education. Or they have been hypnotised. Or tricked in some way. But they're more right about how God feels about us. And, you know, there is there does seem to be a lot of that mixed in with the flat earth. More because I've, I've heard... You know, I know the people who have gone into it and... And stuff. But it doesn't matter because it's dividing us. You know, anything which is dividing us isn't good. Alright, so I take a stand on the fact that the Earth is spherical and not flat. You know, and here we're just, I'm just considering physical logics. Alright, here's another thing. When you believe that, uh, you know, God is way more interested in here, this earth, it can make it more magic. Now, it's good to think that the earth is magical and that anything can happen. You know, um, like Thomas Shampoo, when you make a decision in the right, you know, things happen in the universe. It changes. It, it's, it's sort of, you know, your universe is kind of being reflected around you. So get really confused. I know this is confusing. We're in our mother and father's universe. But we too have our own universe. A physical universe. Through one of these black holes is you. So when you talk about your universe, that is your universe. But it can be reflected in this universe because this is where we're present. So it is magical. But if anything happens... There will be a logical, it will have followed a logical path. It will have fitted in within the rules of the physical universe. We're not going to, I'm not going to walk on water. But, I could metaphorically walk on water. <laughs> <laughs> if I walked on water, there would be some loop, not a loophole, but a higher law or something like that which allowed it and it would be explainable in the physical universe. I don't think Yeshua walked on water. I don't think I will walk in water. If there's water there, I'll swim. Or sit in a boat. But I won't walk on water. Why? To prove it to others? Not going to happen. Everyone... <laughs> has to seek the truth for themselves and feel the ramifications of it. 
And if there's some bit of truth that you're not getting yet, it's because you're not ready for the ramifications of it. Ignorance is bliss. Humanity, for the last while, have spent a lot of times in ignorance and had enjoyable times, had enjoyable experiences. Most of the last 6,000 years, there has been joy and love and happiness. There have been short periods of the opposite and there have been small elements of the opposite. But most of it's been fun. Enjoy the journey. But that doesn't mean you want to remain ignorant. But come out of your ignorance in your own comfortable time. Or not comfortable. Maybe too comfortable. You go. Anyway. God's leading us all. It's God's plan. I trust in that. Good. I might have mentioned this, but patience is the best way, place to start on the wheel of love. Patience leads to wisdom. Oh, did I explain this example? Or did I just think it? The example was, I thought something that my son does which can annoy me. I think I have said this before, sod it, I'll say it again. He would repeat the same word over and over again. And that could become annoying. But I, I employed patience. And I noticed that when the word was repeated after so many times, and I actually remembered my son saying this. You know, he said this a few times. You know, when you say a word over and over again, it soon loses its meaning. And it's just a sound. And once a word has kind of lost its meaning, whatever that word is, it can't really be annoying. Annoying, 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 annoying. If the intent is to annoy, but then I employed patience. Maybe that's why it changed. If I'm trying to annoy you, annoying, annoying. Annoying, 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 annoying. But the patience led to the wisdom that the word loses its meaning and therefore it just becomes like a sound. And that wisdom led to justice. No, sorry, mercy. Led to mercy, I, that wisdom gave, I had then had mercy for my son. And then he gets justice. And then we get peace. And then there is goodness. Which gives more faith. And more faith leads to more patience. So whether I've said that before, I don't know. There we go. And each one has a colour. Patience is orange. And I feel it. Like this was going back to lot over a year ago when I felt these were the seven gifts from God. And the patience was like on the back of the head. So I didn't have pa I didn't have the word patience to it first of all. It just felt like an a shield in a sense on the back of my head and neck and just the top of my shoulders like around like that and I didn't know it was orange until I sort of linked together because obviously we start with red which is faith so you could start with faith but I'm just thinking it's easy to start with patience and then um, in fact faith was the first one I felt but <clears throat> and then wisdom is down here in the tummy belly button and is like a square shape <laughs> and is yellow 
and that feeling was like giving me uh, food sustenance. That's that was the original feeling, like food sustenance. That's all I want to talk about the original feelings mainly. And then mercy is like in your center, just quite small, but yeah, green, round, small, so sweet. Such a lovely feeling, sweet feeling. I actually kind of put it with, I think I felt, I thought it put it with joy first of all, the feeling of it. And then, uh, and then justice. So a bar going from the top of the head to the bottom, like down the back. A bar of light blue. And that f original feeling gave me... Um, and each of these feelings, when I first got them, started with a pain. And I had to realise that that pain was a resistance of the feeling, and I just had to let go, and then the feeling came. That's how I did this. Or how it was done. And so that feeling was like this sort of just, yeah, it's, it's a nice sort of energy, sort of strong, right? And then, but it seemed to be connected to the next one. Peace, dark blue, and just a circle around me. But the circle could spin. And by holding on to the feeling of the justice and the spinning circle, it created this energy. So this, again, the back of the original feelings when I got these over a year ago. And then the goodness was like a bubble. It was in a bubble of God. And that would be purple. And the name goodness. I mean, just like, yeah, just being in a bubble of God. I mean, if you can imagine that, it's pretty good. <coughs> and the faith was... <clears throat> the faith came for... It was like... Um, I I had the help of all the angels um, were there if I wanted them and it was like the shape was like a flower petal I don't know how many petals ten maybe <laughs> I don't know quite a few petals and red and it is a lovely feeling faith faith is a wonderful feeling. Okay, so I just thought about what I want to talk about, one of the other things I want to talk about, another object I have. Not the cup. I'm not going to talk about Brexit. You know, for world politics, I want, we don't want superpowers. We want less and less and less and less. We want the opposite of superpowers. We want anarchy. All right, anyone wants to start the anarchy party um, and you're happy to have me as your leader? Let's start that. But no, I wasn't. that's not what I was going to talk about. I'm going to talk about what's inside it currently. What's inside it currently is tea, and specifically white tea. Uh, tea is a horse. <laughs> it aids you to take you somewhere. And I've been drinking tea all my life, but always black tea. And... That's the black horse. And I've tried red tea. I had red tea a few... Red tea, I probably had red tea before I had green tea. Anyway, red horse. But then I was on to green tea for quite a while. And uh, when I was wondering about if whether the fluoride in black tea or tea, because there's more of it in black tea, could be calcifying my pineal gland, which is not. You've got to have toxic fluoride for that, the stuff they put in the toothpaste and the tap water, which I have avoided probably for about six years now, I think. Anyway, well, not completely. I mean, I always have drank tap water around someone's house, but toothpaste anyway. Evidently, as you might say, but in this light, that is a broken tooth. And yes, a bit stained, but... Oh, and they're healthy enough. The wisdom teeth coming through. Anyway, so when I thought about this, and I did want to try white tea, and I tried it and I liked it. So then I, and it was after that, I was thinking maybe, yeah, the white horse, right? Son of man on a white horse. So yeah, it does seem to aid 
And I've switched my coffee. I bought a little filter coffee thing, and I, that is much nicer. I'm going to avoid instant coffee now. I'm skeptical of instant coffee. I'm not sure it's so good. Uh, it does seem to cause heart palpitations, which... Yeah, it's okay to feel stuff in the heart, and sometimes you might have some feelings which are like heart palpitations, and it, just feel them and it'd be alright. Don't panic or anything. You just do better when you're calm. Um, but yeah, instant coffee. A bit dodgy, I think. So anyway, back to the tea. White horse. So here I am making the claim right at the beginning of this video. Can I tie it up in with this with the scripture? I can tie quite a lot of it up with the scripture. I have discussed before about the seven seals, but that was probably quite a long time ago. And many of you listen now maybe not have heard about this. Um, so I'll just do a quick. So when I was about nine, uh, younger than 19, I don't know, 17, so, I said to a friend of mine, Tim Gardner, I said, um, I worry that I'm Jesus. And he said, it's a sin to worry. And I was like, oh, cool. Because I'd heard that he'd got into God, and I hadn't really read the Bible at that stage. And not really looked at any of it. Um, I probably read the first page or two. But, um, you know, just thinking, I know all this, I've read this. Anyway, so why did I say that to him? Well... I've been getting these feelings. So even back then, I've been getting these feelings. It caused me to say something like that to someone. <laughs> I worry that I'm Jesus. And my understanding at that time was zilch. Just had these feelings. And uh, I, uh, at the age of, how old was I? I was 19 and I was going to be going to Africa and a few months before I was set to go I'd been getting some feelings, new feelings, exciting feelings but there was this tinge of danger I suppose but I saw them as exciting I was this is something this is not nothing this this trip I'm taking to Africa this is meaningful uh, my dad, my dad was uh, lived in Africa from when he was three till thirteen in Uganda, in Tebi. And um, they, uh, one of my dad's cousins, had gone out there to see his parents and um, ended up staying there. And he came and visited my us in England and seemed to get on with him all right. And he seemed to like me, and it was like, my dad's, you know, why don't Stephen, why don't you go out to Africa and we'll stay with him? And, you know, if you save up the money, I'll pay for your flight. You know, you pay for your spend, it's like half each, and this arrangement. So 500 quid for the flight, 500 quid for the, for the spending money, which ended up lasting me about four months. For the first month, I stayed in my uncle's house, in posh house, servants. Uh, gates on the door, <laughs> night watchman, and this was in Kenya, Kenya as they say there, and I played golf and let me a motorbike and I could buy spliffs off the uh, caddies on the golf course. <laughs> and I had a really fun month. But I, you know, I wanted to see Africa. I, I knew I might. He offered, I could have been, I, could, I was offered jobs, I could, you know, I could have got set up, basically. But no, I, I didn't want that. I wanted to meet the people, I wanted to find Africa. I hadn't found Africa yet, I just found the colonised bit. And that's not what I was looking for. So he had a friend in uh, Uganda, in Tebi, and she was an African woman, and um, she had known the, the president of Uganda, I think Idi Amin. And uh, he, he was a, a judge at the time when I was visiting him. Anyway, so... I I went and stayed with her, and these feelings were coming stronger when I got to her house, and I need to get some uh, cannabis, and um, I was just, you know, and there was a bloke who lived in a um, an empty, 
plane just down from her house, which was right by Lake Victoria. It was right there. And, uh, and he used to do a few jobs for her, and his name was Pontius. And so I chatted to him, and I was like, get some cannabis. And he was like, oh, really, you're into that? Yeah, I smoke it. We're members. And kind of got real close with him. And then he was arranging for this night when I would come down and stay the night down there and bring my camera and take some pictures and stuff like that. And I was uh, coming up to this night, I was getting these feelings really strong. And I just thought, yeah, I'm not taking my camera down there. Like, it was a proper camera. I'd just done a photography course at college. It was a decent camera, you know. And for these guys, like $200, set them up with a little gold mine. They'd do stuff for that money. Anyway, so I'd left my camera home. I was walking down there. And this feeling, these feelings, I'd seen the signs, this is it, I, this is all of the feelings I've been getting is about this. And I got down there and he was with someone else. There was someone else there. He was like, oh yeah, this is my friend, he's a member too. You know, we'd been having these real deep chats about being a member and stuff like that. And there was this disco on as well, just next to this field. It was just a concrete thing, no windows, but you could hear the music, the music was loud. And his mate was just down in the, just by the water, and he had a panga lying on the, so he was lying on his back, and there was a panga lying just by his head, so you know, he'd be able to pick it up and grab it. And um, so he said, oh yeah, well, he's the night watchman of this place too. And I thought it was a bit suspicious. And then... I was just chatting for a few minutes, I had a smoke on some spliff, and then um, Pontius suddenly gets up, he's like pretending he can see something over by the gate. And he goes, oh, what's that? You know, I can tell he's pretending, he, and he jaunts us off. And then I just, I'm lying there, and I just look, and there's a full moon right up there. And it's just like, Phew. I have this feeling like, danger, danger. So I quickly get up. I don't know what to do. I just quickly get up. Now, it has occurred to me in my life before that <laughs> I left my body at that stage, but I'm still here, still solid. So anyway, I quickly got up and I walked away towards the empty aeroplane that was sort of in the middle of the field and there was a hut where I'd put my jumper. Uh, he had locked it in a, Pontius had locked it in a shed for me. So I headed over towards this light and I was, you know, shaking, thinking, is someone going to jump down from the plane? I didn't know at that point where Pontius was. So and I kind of gathered myself together. I'd walked past the plane and I had a wee. Um, and then I walked over to the shed and I, I got this, there was a stick and I thought, right, do you know what I mean? Um, I'm going to go down, or I'm going to go down fighting. And um, it was okay. Uh, Pontius came over and he said, oh, what's the problem? And I said, take me back and take me back the shortcut route. Because there was a shortcut route. I'd come the long roadway because it was dark and there were some holes in the shortcut route. So, But he knew the path, so I <laughs> ordered him to take me back. <laughs> White man, not happy, take me back. Give me my jumper. And as we were walking back, he had a newspaper sort of it seemed over his arm. And I was a bit, you know, I was still a bit wet. I was like, show me your, show me your arm. He, come, nothing. Okay. And I made, um, when I got back, I made Nina, because they were like, I think either the windows were just open or there were no locks on them or anything. They could just be open. So I was a bit worried about going to sleep. And uh, I asked for, you know, so, and she, she had this thing. So <laughs> she came in, had that in the room, so if anything happened, I could wind this and make a big noise. But anyway, fell asleep. Beautiful dream. Loveliest dream. I woke up so happy. You know, all that are gone, that feeling, that warning. 
later on my trip in Africa I went then again further out towards the borders of Burundi and place stayed this crater lake in a mud hut found cannabis growing <laughs> naturally <laughs> wonderful time met the real Africans had to see the shit they're having to put up with but yeah brilliant and had this vision which by the time I'd sort of yes we I started off talking about the seven seals so so that was just the build up to this. So I have this vision which I'd never told anyone about and I'm, I've told a couple of people now so I'll just tell you it's a secret. Well actually I'll keep a couple of details. So I saw a vision <laughs> but before I saw this vision I saw three I was in like there was the first one was just everything was white and there were six strawberries but that was my surroundings if you like. I was there and then I saw this computer game that I remember from Atari, or just, you know, a glimpse of it. And it was lightning coming down. I can't remember the missile control or missile command, I think it was called. And then there's this third thing, which I cannot remember to this day. So, if you like, I'm not able to make these three connections again and have this vision again. But I remember the vision, so it started off sort of slow. And it happened twice, exactly the same. And the second time, I then went into sleep, lots of different dreams all night, woke up in the morning, I could remember every single dream right back to that vision, so I wasn't going to forget it. And this vision later in life just, just gave me this thing, it doesn't matter what happens, what failure I am, working in a factory job, it doesn't matter, that is something. So, I have another couple of experiences with a bit dodgy when I go back to Entebbe, Uganda, Nina didn't seem very happy with me um, <laughs> and um, I told her, I was. I said uh, what's it like taking cannabis back from Kenya to from Uganda to Kenya? She said, oh yes, no problem so I, I threw it away straight away I, I knew that there's a lot of smuggling going on from Uganda to Kenya. I know all the weed in Kenya comes from Uganda. I knew that. So I secreted very carefully some away deep down in my bag that I was confident would be fine. But I had this big pot that I showed. I'm thinking of taking this back. What do you think? <coughs> so anyway, so when she said, yeah, fine, take it, no problem. I threw it away. And, um, oh, I wonder if it's still there, it's gone off. Um, <laughs> and so I've taken this night bus back. First thing that happens, going for a wee, me and a couple of other guys, it takes a little stop, go for a wee, and I was a bit, um, what do they call it? can't remember. Stage fright. <laughs> it's taken a while to get going. Those two finish, get back on the bus, the bus starts driving away! Like... Like in the middle of bloody nowhere, and uh, so I just had to whip it back in, you know, to get some down my leg and run after the bus. <laughs> Stop! And luckily, they stopped anyway. And we're going through customs, we got through customs. I didn't like that, and it was dark because when we come the other way, it's daytime, I didn't know what to do or anything because you have to get off the bus and everything. And I didn't know where to go and rejoin the bus and stuff, but. Anyway, that went okay, and we're about, I don't know, half an hour into Kenya, and it was dark, and then our bus gets pulled over by the police, and um, they start going through the luggage compartment, they pull out this big flowery suitcase, and then they look up, and they point at me, and I, I'm the only white guy on the bus, right, blonde hair and white. I had long hair then as well. Not as long as this. <laughs> he pointed up at me and say, Is this yours? I don't know. And then they're like, Can you can you come off? Like, okay, yeah, okay. Get off the bus. I should that's my rucksack there, get it out under the top. Because I was confident I'd hit it well. 
and if they'd got to my camera equipment, I could have been all white man. Don't touch that! <laughs> Very important! Must have touched that! But anyway, I think they could see from my confidence, I was like, yeah, search it away, that I wasn't smuggling. And the bus takes a while for it to go, and the guys, because there, there was a woman who sort of asked me to check, and then she was like, okay, you're right. And then there was a, a guy by the by the door of the bus when I walked back on, and he gave me a, gave me a deep look. You know, they had been tipped off. A white man was smuggling cannabis, so she had tried, you know, that would have been awful. Me being sent to jail, cousin a judge, oh, wouldn't have been good, oh, wouldn't have been good. And so, feeling a lot of things about this, so it was quite strong, got back into Nairobi, everything's okay, I was so impatient, I jumped out the window, <laughs> got a bag, back to Phillips, he was like, oh, I think we better get you back home. <laughs> Like really, you know, yeah, I think my parents had been phoning him, where's Stephen, he's sending us these letters that don't make any sense. <laughs> and um, anyway, so better get you back home. And is that one of those nights that while I was still there, I remember looking up through uh, skylight and could see some of the stars of Orion. And I had this feeling, this, eerie feeling. Well it wasn't eerie again, it was exciting and it, you know part of why I got in that feeling then is what I've been experiencing just recently and I could see that there was this understanding that I w would have but the vision was sort of like a house with a clockwork thing going up the stairs and it's almost like this house I'm in now. So. I have reached that, but at the time I didn't know 